Good morning. I call to order the meeting of the Policy Review Committee of the Board of Education of Baltimore County, May 17th, 2019. I want to welcome staff and guests that are here today. Our first item of business is the approval of the minutes. The live video footage of the April 15th, 2019 meeting represents the minutes of the meeting. The minutes stand approved as recorded. <coughs> the second item on our agenda is discipline policies update. Staff is here today to provide an update on the progress of the superintendent's discipline work group. I welcome Dr. Amalio Nieves. Dr. Nieves, please come forward. Good morning. Good morning. <laughs> Just uh, to remind um, uh, the Policy Review Committee and our viewers of uh, the goal of the Student Behavior and Discipline Council, uh, it was established this school year to examine school climate and issues related to school discipline. And it is our superintendent's commitment and this school system's commitment toward ensuring safe and orderly learning environments. The work group met quarterly to streamline efforts and broaden perspectives through the inclusion of student, parent, teacher voices, uh, through the examination of system-wide data related to student behavior and bullying, and develop recommendations for system-wide enhancements. And the council specifically addressed the school system's actions related to prevention, rest restoration, and logical consequences uh, related to bullying, student behavior, and school violence. Each member of the work group offered invaluable input, uh, which is necessary to keep and make our schools safe and conducive learning environments for all of our students. Our last meeting was earlier this week on Wednesday, and um, at that meeting, we uh, reviewed policies 5520, 5551, 5561, 5520 is dress code, uh, 5561, school use of reportable offenses, and policy 5580, bullying, cyberbullying, harassment, and intimidation. And uh, at that meeting, uh, as we analyzed those policies, there were minor revisions, uh, suggested revisions to the policy. Most of them were just standard editing conventions, but making sure that language was consistent across the policies. For example, when we define school board property, are we seeing alignment of that language across all the policies that we have in the 5000 series? So we wanna make sure that as we look at those policies that the language is consistent. Looking um, in policy 5551, uh, uh, when we talk about security officer, are we talking about school resource officers or are we talking about the school leader? And so uh, that's a piece that we're examining. And then in uh, the anti, uh, in the bullying, cyberbullying, harassment, intimidation policy, uh, again, looking consistency of language across policies um, and De deciding whether we want to define conflict because many times there is, seems to be confusion as to what is conflict and what is bullying, harassment, and intimidation. And we had a lot of valuable input from our student representative on that group. So that's an overview of the Student Behavior and Discipline Council. Thank you. And do board members have uh, questions or comments for Mr. Nieves? Okay, thank you for that update. Okay, thank you. The next, the next item of business is item three, and we are gonna consider the public comments received at the May 7th board meeting. No comments were received regarding the revisions to policies 1110 and 1200. Absent any objection, these policies will be moved forward for third reader on June 11th, 2019. Are there any objections from the committee? Okay, thank you. Following public comments received at the board meeting on May 7th, staff revisited policies 5550 and 5560 and made additional edits to the policies. Copies of the most recent draft of policy 5550 and 5560 were provided to committee members in advance of today's meeting. And staff has also provided copies of these drafts to each committee member um, for us to have here at our desks. 
Before we consider this most recent revision, I would like to welcome attorneys from the Public Justice Center and Disability Rights Maryland who have been invited to speak with us uh, this morning concerning these two policies. So we welcome you. Please come forward and introduce yourselves. Good morning and welcome. Good morning, Megan Berger, Disability Rights Maryland. Thank you for the opportunity to be here this morning. Um, I'm Renuka Rege, I'm from the Public Justice Center. Thank you and welcome. I understand you had comments prepared for us. Uh, we yeah, we um, we were invited to invited to be here. We we don't have anything additional. Um, other than the written comments that we submitted previously to the board. Um, and I know we gave public comment on um, the most recent board, board meeting. Um, so we, our, our position has sort of stayed steadfast throughout. We were provided with the um, newly edited and revised draft policy 5560. Um, and it certainly looks encouraging. We have not had a chance to fully review it yet. Um, but I think our main, our main concern, and we have detailed it in our written comments, but our main concern continues to be um, the assignment to an alternative education program provision. And it does look like the revisions have addressed that piece of it. Although, Although I think we do need to review yeah. it. I mean, I don't think we could comment on this draft having just received it this morning. Uh, like right now. I don't think we could comment on this draft yet, um, but our, we've, we've previously provided our written comments and oral comments um, at the board meeting, and that would be the same. Okay, thank you. Um, and we do appreciate staff revisiting the policy and reviewing your comments and reviewing our public comments and incorporating changes that they feel are appropriate for us to move forward on these policies. Do I have board members that have questions or comments for our guests? Ms. Howie. Okay, well thank you very much and we do appreciate your concern and advocacy for students because we certainly do care that every student receive what they need to, to succeed in school, even if there are issues of behavior um, and certainly when there are issues of disability, we wanna do what is right for each and every student. So we do appreciate your advocacy. Thank you. Thank you. With that, we will consider the uh, policy 5550 disruptive behavior. As previously stated, staff has further revised policy 5550 following the May 7th board meeting. The committee will now consider the most recent draft. Are there any further corrections, additions, or modifications to policy 5550 from um, board members? I would just remind the committee that if there are no corrections, policy 5550 will be moving forward for third reading as presented by the staff. Ms. Pasteur, do you have any questions or comments at this time? Okay. Okay, great. Um, so hearing no further uh, corrections or additions or modifications, all those in favor of moving policy 5550 to the full board for third reading, please say aye. 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 Any opposed? Say no. The ayes have it and the motion carries. Policy 5550 will be moved forward for third reading as edited. The next item for our consideration is policy 5560, suspension, assignment to alternative programs or expulsions. As previously stated, staff further revised policy 5560 following the May 7th board meeting. The committee will now consider the most recent draft, which is the draft PRC 51719.
Are there any further corrections, additions, or modifications to policy 5560, or any questions or comments? Okay, thank you. So the question is on the revision of policy 5560 as recommended by staff. All those in favor of moving policy 5560 as presented in the update to the full board for third reading, please say aye. 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 Any opposed? The ayes have it and the motion carries. Thank you for staff's extra work on this policy. We really appreciate it. Our next item of business is new business, policy 5110, admission, and for that I invite Dr. Nieves to come forward and discuss that with us. Good morning again. Good morning. <clears throat> In accordance with Board of Education Policy and Superintendent's Rule 8130, policy 5110, admission, is scheduled for review in school year 2018-19 and policy 5110 establishes criteria for admitting students in Baltimore County Public Schools. Staff is recommending minor revisions to conform to the policy review committee's editing conventions. And the only uh, changes, again, are editing conventions and then we, that's it. Thank you. Is there any discussion from board members? <clears throat> Mr. Offerman? Yes. Uh, uh, looking at the standard section of the revised draft, uh, any student seeking admission from a private program in other public school system or non-public certified by the state of Maryland should be placed in the grade level to which they were certified by the sending school, provided by uh, providing the uh, child is age eligible. Uh, with that policy and uh, or, or, or that statement, if someone brings a student, typically it may possibly be a younger student who would come to us who the parents strongly feel needs to perhaps remain in the same grade that they were in, even though the previous school promoted them, per se, mm -hmm. say this is over the summer situation. Do we have any flexibility at all to make an educational decision to, to have that student be in a grade lower than the, than the sending school said, since we have no control over the sending school's, uh, the sending school's uh, standards for, uh, for uh, promotion? And we welcome Dr. Renard Adams. Hi, good morning. Good morning. Um, there are instances, um, for example, there's been at least two this year that I'm aware of where I got the phone call because we had students um, who had uh, previously been held back and were at an age where um, the age difference between them and their grade, their assigned grade level peers was great. Um, and I believe, um, don't hold me to the memory, but I believe in our promotion and retention policy and rule, we do have some standards that say we expect students to be um, at a certain age, for example, when they're in ninth grade and things like that. And so using parameters like that, um, we can work with principals and their staffs to ensure that um, the grade placement of a student does not then violate those policies and procedures in terms of when we expect students to be high school age. We certainly don't want 16 year olds in eighth grade for an exam for example so there are instances where adjustments can be made in accordance with policy and rule and that would cover the situation of like a younger student whose parents strong who strongly feel that that going to the grade that was recommended or approved by the last or the ascending system uh, is inappropriate and the student needs a, 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 an, an additional experience year in the in, in maybe the, the grade just uh, just one lower 
Yes, sir. We also, um, because of um, our, our, we often have students who are uh, ESOL students who come in and we don't have a lot of documentation on them at all, right? right? And so we may not have um, as much uh, report card, prior, prior schooling report card information to allow us to know exactly. And so then we look at the student's birthday. We do, teachers do assessments of the student's academic levels and try to make a placement that um, is best for the student educationally and socially, but again, does not have the student so far over age for his or her grade mates that that becomes a challenge or a potential safety issue. Okay, thank you. Ms. Pasture. Yes. In the case about which Mr. Offerman is speaking, if the school does not agree with the parent, and I've seen that happen, what that is... That never happens. <laughs> no, and I'm joking, we're talking about no, putting... The, oh, that the no, school I'm, doesn't the, the <laughs> Oh, no, we know in some world that doesn't happen. Um, what is the parents' recourse then? Because this is, this is different. He's speaking sure. about holding the child back, and especially if we can see that the skill sets are not there. Mm -hmm. So what is the child's recourse? Because often, as an administrator, you want to go, this is the rule, this is sure. what we have. The sending school says this is where the child is supposed to be. I want this child here and the parent, and they get into it. Sure. I want the official word on So uh, with it. most principal level decisions, uh, those decisions typically first get appealed to the executive director of school support. Um, they typically then will reach out to those of us in central office who um, have oversight over those policies and rules being implemented and we work collaboratively to address those concerns. So whenever a parent uh, has a concern around a decision that a principal is making, um, our direction is typically um, the next step in conversation is the offices of the community superintendent so they can reach that executive director to have further conversation. Thank you. You're welcome. Certainly, Ms. Howie. Thank you. And just so it's clear, Ms. Pastor, if at the uh, community superintendent level, if there is not consensus reached, then there is, there are additional appeal rights available that could ultimately come before this board. Thank you. Mr. Offerman. Yeah, I, I'm still concerned that uh, although this, I understand that, that, that there is an appeal process and that would eventually come, it possibly could end up coming come, come to the board as a, perhaps a final step within our system. Uh, wouldn't our board then judge the, uh, the uh, situation based on this policy? And I, see, I don't see anywhere in this policy where there's any, 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 any give. If, if we go to the policy, if someone has this, has this problem we, that, 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 I, that, I, that I described earlier, and they come to us, and they, you know, and, and what I'm being told is, 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 that, is that it can be reviewed and uh, assessments are done as the case of the ESOL students and all that. I, I'm just saying this po to, to me, and perhaps I'm missing something there, or maybe some other, some other policy involvement. I, I don't see where there's. I guess I, I'm just not as comfortable as I'd like to be about about the opportunity, for. Uh, I'm, I'm I'm not expressing it well. I apologize. Let me let, let me try to, to say it over again from, from the beginning. Uh, st uh, just to, to what uh, Miss. Uh, uh, Pastor alluded to. Parent comes in, strongly believes their child is not capable of going to the grade that the, the sending school came from. Okay, so there's a disagreement. Okay, from that, uh, are we are we saying there? Are, are my understanding is that there are processes in place to allow that to possibly happen, because this policy says any student doesn't say there's any any other way to go here. So mm -hmm. Any student. Shall be placed. Shall be placed in a grade level to which are certified. So I don't see. I mean, I, and I, I, I'm all for except. You know, I'm all for looking at individual situations. That, that's a, that's in fact why I'm asking. Does this does this policy as written give us any any flexibility? What I if I could if I could interject. What I um, would offer is, um, would you allow Dr. Nieves and I to huddle? 
um, because promotion and retention lives with Dr. McComas, myself, and Ms. Shea, but he has um, this particular, he and Dr. Martin Knox have this particular policy as a staff to bring that forward. Could we have time sure. to huddle and compare to make sure between those two that the situations like um, you're describing are allowed for? Okay. Just want to double check because I don't have it in front of me sure. and I don't want to go off of my memory. Is that okay with the committee? <clears throat> um, that's okay. I think maybe too, in terms of addressing your concern, um, a line in here, a statement in here that any concerns or disputes would be handled through the normal course of special appeals or um, in terms of the parent understanding what is their recourse if they have a concern about the placement, whether their concern is that the child will not be um, sufficiently challenged or whether a child will, would be overly challenged. Overly challenged. Right. Um, so is that something that staff could consider yes. is a statement in there addressing what is the, the recourse when there is um, disagreement or, or just concern? There may, there may not be disagreement, but there may be concern that then would need to be handled. Ms. Pasteur? Yes. Um, uh, while you're hub huddling over this um, and using what Mrs. Causey has said, I, I would like for you to consider in terms of the wording how one, the administration, the school administration knows that and that all steps are laid out so that they are easily accessible so that there is not a back, the wording is clear, mm -hmm. so that there is no back and forth between the parent and the school mm -hmm. in trying to figure out what the next step is. We can certainly that, do. Okay. Yes, ma'am. Thank you. So given questions and comments about this and the uh, additional work uh, by our staff, uh, would the uh, committee entertain a motion to postpone this policy to the next I, policy I, review committee meeting? Yeah, I, 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 I would, I, I'd like to make that motion, yes. Is there a second? second? Any discussion? All those in favor, please say aye. 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 <clears throat> those opposed, say no. The ayes have it, and the um, motion carries that it will be postponed to the next meeting. Thank you. <coughs> Excuse me. Thank you very much. Our next item of business is policy 5120, attendances and excuses. And again, presenting is Dr. Nieves. In accordance with Board of Education Policy and Superintendent's Rule 8130, policy 5120, attendance and excuses is scheduled for review in school year 2018-19. Policy 5120 is the school system student attendance policy. And once again, staff is recommending minor edits to this policy to conform to the policy review committee's editing conventions. Are there questions or comments from board members? Ms. Adekoya? So I know with the new school year in our handbook, there was like specified reasons why somebody can be absent and then you have to bring in a note. It says in um, standards, I guess line um, 23, I was just wondering if we can add only for reasons specified in state regulation or authorized, if we can add specified in handbooks. Because many teachers keep up with that and sometimes students will bring reasons that don't align with the hand, oh, sometimes students would bring reasons that don't align with the handbook. I didn't know if it was necessary or just. So know. my understanding is that what's in the handbook is what is in state regulation okay. uh, as far as the excused absences. And there is, um, there is the ability of the superintendent's designee, uh, who in many cases would be the principal, to um, allow an excused absence for students. So while it may not be in the handbook, there may still be some ability for the principal to permit it to be an excused absence. So Ms. Howard, you're, you're saying that the language in the policy does not need to change? I don't believe so, no ma'am. Okay, any additional questions or comments? I had a question related to the um, standards A. It says this student, policy, this student attendance policy shall be communicated annually to students, parents, guardians, and staff in a manner determined by the superintendent. 
And so I'm wondering, what is the uh, process? Ms. Adekoya pointed out that there is the student handbook, um, but I know also with our uh, beautifully diverse community um, that we have multiple global languages that are spoken. So I'm curious um, how it's handled for multiple languages and also what other uh, paths are available, digital or otherwise. Okay. Good morning. Um, good morning, Ms. Mustafer. Yes. Um, the communication around this policy is provided through our student handbook, um, which is posted on the web and is in multiple languages um, and can be accessed. Um, if, in fact, we would find a language that's not posted, they can certainly reach out to the office and uh, we will get that in the language um, that has been requested so that there's clear understanding around this policy and practice. Okay, my understanding is that in years past we have had student handbooks uh, printed in Spanish? Yes. And is that still the case? We have had them. Um, they are at a request. Sometimes we get more requests than others, but yes. Okay, and is that requested by the principals? Um, we do, yes. We try to keep a, to we try to keep a, a certain count, um, okay. but then if there's additional requests, we meet those as well. Okay, great. Mm -hmm. Any other uh, comments or questions? Okay, if there are no corrections, policy 5120 is moved forward for first reading as presented. Um, all those in favor, please say aye. 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 Any opposed? The ayes have it and the motion carries. Policy 5120 will be moved forward for first reading. Thank, Thank you. you very much. Thank you. Our next item of business is policy 7530, naming of an area school. And for that, we call forward Mr. Kevin Smith and Mr. Pete Dixit. Good morning and welcome. Good morning. I'm joined, as you can see, with, by Mr. Pete Dixit. And um, in accordance with the Board of Education policy and superintendent rule, um, we are bringing policy 70, 7530 um, scheduled for review. This policy um, outlines the standards for naming an area of the school or its grounds. Um, staff is recommending the enhancements to this policy to, to add greater clarity to what the policy is. In addition to that, to um, create additional refinements to make sure that the understanding of how this policy is interpreted is as clear as possible um, related to naming um, a school, uh, an area of the school, or some part of its grounds. We're available for any questions you have as it relates to this policy. Is there any discussion from board members related to this policy? Mr. Offerman, did you have any comments or questions related to policy 7530? Okay, if there are no corrections, policy 7530 is moved forward for first reading as presented. All those in favor, please say aye. 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 Any opposed? The ayes have it and the motion carries. Thank you. Thank you, Madam Chair and board members. Our next item of business is policy 1600, public charter schools, and presenting is Dr. Renard Adams. Welcome again. Good morning again. Uh, policy 1600 is the board's public charter school policy, which is required by law. Uh, staff is recommending that the policy be revised to delineate clear standards for student enrollment, align with state law, include language concerning the right to appeal, the denial of a public charter school to the state board, and to conform with policy review committee editing conventions. Um, if I could take you through the proposed changes. Um, in section three, item F, um, regarding enrollment, uh, we uh, are recommending a change that says that the charter school is open to all eligible students on a space available basis, and that if the number of student applicants exceed the predetermined student capacity, a lottery shall be used to fill the available seats. In section four, item B, number four, um, we uh, wanted to add language that says we shall not grant a charter to a school that fully operates online. 
in uh, that same section, section four, item C, number three, um, based on feedback from the board during our most recent conversations about the charters, um, we wanted to add the fact that the superintendent will submit to the board a fiscal impact statement as a component of uh, his or her recommendation. Then in that same section, section four, item C, number six, uh, we wanted um, to clearly state that an applicant may appeal the denial of their application to the Maryland State Board of Education. <clears throat> and then the other changes are really um, to conform with PRC's editing conventions and to change titles of things from like assistant soup to community superintendent and things of that nature. Thank you. Board members, is there any discussion, comments, or questions? I had one question sure. related to page four, uh, line 18. The public charter school shall provide a written annual report to the appropriate community superintendent by September 30th. And that just um, replaces what our former organization was calling it assistant superintendent. Mm -hmm. um, but I'm, but I would like to see language added that the uh, written annual report is provided to the community superintendent, the superintendent, and the board, so that all three uh, receive that report at the same time. And when I say the same time, obviously sure. the board meetings are set as they are, so the community superintendent and the superintendent would most likely receive the report first and then it would be brought forward either in a weekly update for the full board to receive at the same time or at a board meeting. Certainly. So if, are there any thoughts on that from my committee members? I, I think it's a good idea. I agree with that. Should I make a formal motion to amend? So I'm gonna make a formal motion to amend page four, line 18. The public charter school shall provide a written annual report to the appropriate community superintendent, comma, superintendent, and the Board of Education by September 30th. Is there a second to my motion? Second. Thank you, Mr. Offerman. Any discussion of the amendment? All those in favor, please say aye. 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 Any opposed? No? Okay, the motion carries to add that amendment. Is there any other discussion of policy 1600? Hearing none, we'll now uh, take a question on moving the revised policy 1600 to the board for first reading. All those in favor of moving it forward, please say aye. 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 Any opposed? The ayes have it and the motion carries. Policy 1600 will move forward for first reading as edited. Our next item of business is policy 6102, teaching controversial issues, again presented by Dr. Adams. Yes, um, so this policy 6102 supports the teaching of controversial issues as an integral part of the curriculum when enhanced to support the instructional program. Um, we're simply recommending edits that uh, allow this policy to be revised to conform with PRC's editing conventions. Thank you. Is there any discussion of this policy from board members? Going once? <laughs> <laughs> Hearing none, uh, if there are no corrections, policy 6102 is moved forward for first reading as presented. All those in favor, please say aye. 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 Any opposed? The ayes have it and the motion carries. Policy 6102 will move forward for first reading as presented. Our next policy is 6200. I'll School do this one too. <laughs> Mr. Embriali was stuck in traffic, so I'll, I'll, I'll take this one too, it's fine. Okay, great. Policy 6200, school libraries, and uh, presenting we have Mr. 
Renard Adams, excuse me, Dr. Renard Adams. Sure, thank you. So policy 6200 is the school system's policy on school libraries. Um, we're recommending uh, revisions to include the current Maryland educational standards around school libraries um, to affirm our commitment to staff school libraries, staffing school libraries with um, certificated staff. Good morning. We're a little ahead. <laughs> Welcome, Mr. To, um, Good morning. Good morning. Sure, to identify those Maryland program standards as a guidance document um, that helps us align our school libraries and to uh, always conform with PRC's editing conventions. Did you want to comment also, Mr. Imbriali? I'm not exactly sure what Dr. Adams said to start with, but I'll simply say there were some just minor modifications that were made uh, to this policy. And they include uh, things like uh, college and career ready standards to align to the new language instead of common core standards. Um, and we did add in uh, the policy statement C, the board is committed to maintaining adequate school libraries and ensuring staff of certif staffing of certificated library media specialists. So the word certificated has been added. Great, thank you. Board members, are there any comments or questions for staff regarding this policy? Nope. Hearing none, uh, if there are no corrections, policy 6200 is moved forward for first reading as presented. All those in favor, please say aye. 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 Any opposed? The ayes have it and the, motion, and the motion carries and policy 6200 will move forward as presented. Thank you, Thank very, you very much. Thank you very much. And I apologize. That's all right. No, no worries. <laughs> no worries. <clears throat> Our next item of business is policy 6702, extracurricular activities. And for that, Dr. Adams. Yes. Uh, policy 6702 acknowledges the board's commitment to providing a, a wide variety of extracurricular activities as a part of a student's overall educational experience. Again, we're simply recommending that we um, some minor edits to conform with PRC's editing conventions. Um, we did add, um, staff are suggesting that a statement be added uh, on beginning on lines 11 that the extracurricular activities offered should be comprehensive, well-balanced, and provide many and varied opportunities for all students. Thank you. Is there any discussion, questions, or comments from board members? Mr. Offerman? Yeah, uh, line 30, 31, 32. Uh, just want to make sure I'm clear on this. Uh, extra, extracurricular activities shall be sponsored, proven, conducted, planned, and or supervised by school staff. Okay, uh, the school staff also include, is that statement, like contract coaches or, I mean, outside coaches who, who come Sure, yes. System. So um, typically this, this does cover sort of athletics, our interscholastic, right. interscholastic program and our allied sports. And so the staff that typically are uh, supervising the students are coaches and teachers and other staff from the building and administrators usually present, uh, at least one at um, sponsored activities, football games, lacrosse games, and things like that. Now I'm thinking more of practices when, when the when, when the coach of the sport may be outside of, of the uh, school system. Yes, um, the coach, um, during practices, we have the coaches and the assistant coaches. Right. Um, many of our coaches are our teachers, and we also have many coaches who are not right. um, BCPS staff. Um, coaches also have assistant coaches, which are typically always our teachers. So there are always full-time BCPS staff as a part of the supervision of the students. Okay. Uh, I don't know if I answered your question. No, I think you did. I, I'm just, and again, this is just me. I, I'm thinking of a situation where both the head coach and two of the assistant coaches are not, at least in my knowledge, they're, they're, they're not BCA, BCPS regular staff members. Okay? In other okay. words, they're not teachers anywhere in the system or employed by the system other than in, in, in employed as a, a as a as a coach, for which you sign a contract and all the, sure. I mean, all those good things. So so, uh, uh, if someone has a situation like that, and I guess I'm actually looking more for the rule than I am for the policy, and I apologize right. for that. But I'm just wondering how this particular uh, this particular or these particular lines apply in 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 that in, in that. Uh, situation where you have a head coach or a head coach and an assistant or there is no regular Baltimore County staff member who is who is coaching the team and of course you you, you have a lot more practice than you have games and situations sure. like that 
So I, I, that's why I'm, I'm, I'm just, I, I, I'm not saying we should stop having that. Like I'm sure. saying I'm wondering if, if we need to re revisit this wording so we, we, so, so we include all, you know, we include those people somehow in, in this, those people who, because believe me, no, no one is coaching for the money. I can guarantee you that, okay? Having coached 41 sports um, myself, I, I, I just want to ensure that you know uh, that, that this that this that these lines in in these lines either in, uh, encompass the, right. all the potential coaches that we have, even in situations where we don't have a, a school staff member present. Sure, I think what I would offer, Mr. Offerman, is um, we, to, for us to consider what we define as supervised by. Right. Uh, so for example, a high school uh, sports athletics program, you have the principal, the assistant principals, you also have an athletic director. Right. And so anytime there are practices going on, the athletic director is in the building, is present, because someone has to basically lock the building up at night with the BLS and all of that. And so even I would, I would believe that even in the instance where a team may be coached entirely by outside staff the athletic director is a BCBS staff member and is present on premises um, and so there is still supervision by one of our staff members um, but if that is um, too is too much inferred and not clear enough we can certainly no, edit. I'm, I'm thinking of again I don't mean I just want to make the policy the best it can be policy coach doesn't coach have 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 an away game now, does, are we counting on the administrators at the at the at the other schools to be supervising? Well, there is sort of uh, I'm going to say it wrong, Ms. Howie, in locus parentis. Um, I probably butchered that. <laughs> but the administrator, you know, if, if students are coming to play at my school, I'm sort of responsible as a BCPS staff member for those students at my school during that time, okay. um, along with the supervi the supervising staff that arrive with them. Okay. That would be my belief as an administrator. So Mr. Offerman, uh, when you look at the entire range that's in this particular uh, paragraph, uh, it does say shell, but it also says sponsored, approved, conducted, planned, and or supervised. Oh, okay. So supervised is not the only requirement, right. and, um, or. and it's and or, right. and yes, the in loco parentis does um, cover some of these issues as well. But certainly, if, if it just said supervised, shall be supervised, uh, I think your concern um, would be more pressing. But given that there is a range and it is, we include and or, um, it, it, one of these things has to be done by school staff okay. at some point in time. Okay. Thank you. Ms. Pestro or Ms. Adekoye, I believe you had your hands up. <laughs> okay, Ms. Adekoya, did you still have a comment or question? I was just going to um, ask, in terms of coaches that are not BCPS staff, mm -hmm. um, if you could just go through all of the uh, requirements that they have to go through in order to become a coach, because uh, I do sure. believe that they have extensive uh, they, they do, and I do, I do not have them all memorized, um, Ms. Causey, forgive me, but um, those uh, staff who intend to be coaches are um, they go through of course because they're working with our students they go through the fingerprinting and background checks through it, human resources there's a multi-step interview um, so they are interviewed at the school um, typically by the athletic director and the principal or principal's designee which is usually an assistant principal mr sai our coordinator of athletics also um, is a part of that interview process for our external coaches and so we certainly um, do what we can to make sure that any adult working with our students um, is following and is held to those same standards of background check and fingerprinting um, and understands what their responsibilities are for students as we would with our full-time um, employees and staff. Thank you. So I think the, the overall concern is related to student safety. Sure. We want to make sure that the students are, their activities are approved, that they are conducted and planned in, in conjunction with supervision with appropriate personnel, whether it's in-house BCPS full-time uh, or part-time employees that become coaches or whether it's outside community members that become coaches. Um, perhaps um, in the policy statement paragraph, we could add a statement that reflects that, that the board is committed to student safety during these activities um, 
and then the standards that you have reflect what the school system will be doing to ensure their safety. Does that make sense to uh, the committee members? Because I think your I think your point is well taken ab about what the concern is. The concern is the safety by making sure we have those appropriate um, adults supervising our students. Ms. Pasteur, it can actually just be attached at the with the first sentence in there somewhere committed to providing a wide variety of extra curricular opportunities for students in a, in a safe and whatever else manner. In a safe manner? Or whatever, I just okay. threw that out, but that just keeps you from having to really sure. redo the entire paragraph. That sounds like a very good idea, Ms. Pestuer. Okay. So I'm hearing an edit on line eight um, towards the end of that student to add, end of that sentence rather, uh, to add something to the effect of um, providing a wide variety of extracurricular opportunities for students while maintaining student safety or something to that effect. Ms. Pesture, would you want to make a motion to adding that phrase on line eight? <laughs> well, I'll try to read the sentence. Uh, the, uh, the Board of Education, the Board of Education of Baltimore County is committed to providing a wide variety of extracurricular activities, extracurricular opportunities for students while maintaining student safety. I move that. I move what he said. I move that we add on line eight while maintaining student safety. Student, oh, mm, while maintaining student safety. Is there a second? Second. Any discussion? All in favor of Ms. Pasture's amendment, please say aye. 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 Any noes? The motion carries. Thank you, Ms. Pasture. Okay, is there any other discussion on this? Okay, um, all those in favor of moving policy 6702 forward as amended for first reading, please say aye. 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 Any noes? The motion carries and policy 6702 will move forward as edited for first reading to the full board. Thank you. Thank you, Dr. Adams. You're welcome. The next item is Committee General Good and Welfare. And thank you, Dr. McComas, for joining us. Sorry, I thought my meeting would be up at 10. I'm, we moved very quickly today. Bravo. Yes. Bravo. We're, uh, our, we keep improving. Continuous improvement, right? Uh, the floor is now open to the members of the committee to discuss issues or of concern. I must emphasize that this is not the time to conduct business as there has not been notice provided as required by the Open Meetings Act. Um, I would like to begin uh, because there was an, an issue that was brought to the committee from Ms. Rowe. Um, Ms. Rowe is unable to join us today. There's a family member um, having surgery, and she had requested that uh, at this time there be a general discussion related to the gifts policy, the ethics policy. Um, but since she's not here, I would uh, ask for consensus to postpone this item to the next policy review committee meeting. Okay, so if Ms. Howie would uh, note that consensus and we'll move that forward. And are there any other issues that members of the committees would like to bring forward? Uh, anything to consider in the future? Um, what was the update on the cell phone? What did you say to do the cell phone policy? The, any updates on the cell phone project? Uh, there were no updates um, scheduled for this meeting on the cell phone project. Mr. Offerman, do you want to? Uh, yes, uh, I uh, have a, uh, a concern about, or not concern, I have an interest in uh, the, uh, the magnet student acceptance, magnet school, magnet, particularly magnet school, student acceptance 
the program. Now, I have a meeting scheduled for myself with, with people about that, okay? Uh, so perhaps it's not that we bring it up at the next meeting, which is in June, but perhaps the following meeting, uh, I'd like to maybe, 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 maybe you know, uh, consider that. I'm particularly concerned of the, if, if I can remind members of the committee that uh, about the one situation we had where uh, uh, that, 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 that came up as an appeal to the, to the overall board, uh, and I'm trying to investigate whether anything's been changed in that or, you know, wh wh whether it needs a policy change. So I guess I'm ahead of myself a little bit, but I'd still like to bring that into consideration, although I don't think it's essentially we do it from June. Okay, and do you have the policy number? Is Ms. Howie aware of the policy no. number related to magnet? No, I don't. I'm sorry. So the issue is, would the uh, board like to consider putting on the agenda for not the June 11th meeting? But whatever the next or meeting. Not, ju the, not the June meeting. Not June 17th PRC meeting, but the July. We're currently not scheduled for a meeting in July. Oh, we're not scheduled for a meeting in July. Um, so at the agenda planning phone conference for the June 17th meeting, okay. let's discuss, we'll discuss that. That's fine. That, 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 we, that, that would be fine. Okay. Ms. Pesture? Yes. Uh, Mr. Offerman was in my brain. I want to have a discussion as well um, about the magnet program. Um, so I'd like it to be a little more far reaching because mine has nothing to do with that particular um, issue. Uh, and I would like to address that issue simply because I had to, you remember, I had to recuse myself because I knew all of the parties in it. But I would like to have it because I couldn't speak to it. And there were things that you didn't understand that, you know, a, as a board, because you've not been involved in the process. So I'm happy you brought that up. But I would, and I'm so happy that um, um, Dr. McComas actually uh, has moved forward. And I don't know if this is the appropriate place, but I do want us to discuss how we got to the um, uh, for the middle school uh, magnets, the middle magnet schools, how we got to the current policy in terms of admission. Good morning and welcome, Dr. McCombs. Good morning, everyone. Um, I, I just came forward to offer, perhaps um, in support of all of our board members, we could do a presentation in our June curriculum committee to do a historical walkthrough of where we are with our admissions process. And, uh, approximately five or six years ago, and Ms. Howie may correct me, uh, we did receive a civil rights complaint, uh, which then led to uh, an entire task force looking at our magnet uh, processes. Uh, and I think it would be um, beneficial if we were able to provide uh, an uh, educational presentation to the curriculum committee. And I know uh, several of you sit on that. And of course, that's a video record for any board member who would like to attend or uh, review it at their uh, leisure, that we could provide you background and context for where we are today. And of course, I know Mr. Offerman, we have a meeting scheduled as well uh, that we could also answer any questions and in the curriculum committee, we could answer those questions and I could have the appropriate staff who have been here throughout that time period as we have made adjustments in alignment with the OCR complaint. Mr. Offerman, Ms. Pestro. Yeah, I, I, I think this, I, I, I'm, I'd, I'd like to hear a presentation. I think it'd be really good, but I'm, I'm, I'm just wondering, and I'm interested in other members' input, of whether this would be appropriate to, to, do it, to do the entire board, as opposed to just one of the committees on, on, on the board. Now that I, now that I think about it, uh, to give from. And again, eight of us are new, so we don't have the history that you all have. Sure. Okay. Well, I guess we're not new after six months, but we we were new six months that way. So I, you know, I'm, I'm wondering rather than have them do this for me or for us or curriculum, if we could do it one time in the, in, in just in terms of efficiency and have the whole board uh, be, be, uh, be, be able to sit and, and through this. I think it might, it might be the benefit of the entire board. Of course, it's got to go through a different process. I understand that. But this is, that, that's what I'm thinking at the moment. Well, I think that Dr. McCombs' suggestion is, is um, well taken. And I think that there are three members here on the Policy Review Committee that are also on the Curriculum Committee. Right. And is the 
curriculum committee meeting ahead of the policy review committee? I, I think they that typically fall on the same week. It's typically the week in between the two board meetings. So the I think typically the third week of the month. And um, so I think they do occur on all, you know, the same week, typically. So okay. I don't have the schedule right in front of me. Because it could be the issue that we, that you give the presentation in the curriculum committee, and then the curriculum committee could decide to bring that, ask that presentation to be presented at the board retreat, which is scheduled for July, mm -hmm. um, or in terms of, um, if there were thoughts that it, the policy needed to be modified or pulled forward, then you could bring that suggestion to the policy review committee agenda planning okay. session. Um, my thought is, is we do try and accomplish a lot of work in the committee right. because our full board meetings are typically very full right. <laughs> mm -hmm. and to, you know, to work through the committees. Ms. Pesture, you had a comment also? Yes, uh, I, I do think that that is a good idea so we can um, hash out some of our questions. Mr. Offerman is correct. I agree that then it in some forum needs to be presented to the entire board because we and this won't be the last time that will not have been the last time we will have an issue That's nor will it be the last time or well we haven't had it yet but if you've been around you've been bombarded with folks from parents whose child didn't get in i get it coming out of sudbrook because sudbrook was my baby the whole issue and there are some concerns that the whole board needs to hear, mm -hmm. even with um, the, the, the question from the office of whomever. You, you, you violate another group's rights and equity in taking care of one. So I think all of that needs to, we need to discuss that. I would, um, yeah. I because would so the board will have to address all of these things at some point. Sure. Certainly, uh, however the board decides to proceed, um, our staff and team is prepared to support. Uh, we could, I just offer as well, If it, w I will at this point assume that we are doing a presentation in our June curriculum committee, and then I will make sure that I ha ask Ms. Gover to send the video link of that meeting out to all board members okay. so that they can see the discussion and then the question, and um, again, I recognize time is is limited for everyone's schedule and opportunity, so I hope that that helps um, in good faith to make sure all board members are able to have the background uh, to engage in whatever discussion or policy review you choose to do. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Is there consensus on that from the committee? Yes, that's fine. Okay, I think that's great. Thank you so much for coming. My pleasure. Joining us. Sure, I was just going to say, is there any further discussion? Ms. Uh, Pasture? Uh, yes, Dr. Oh, do you McComas. want Dr. McComas? Yes. I, if you would uh, please come back, thank you. There's nothing for you to answer other than to maybe take a bow. Um, <laughs> I, I do want to commend uh, Randallstown High School for, hold up your book, Mrs. Causing, please. <laughs> yes, ma'am? Randallstown? Please, your book. Oh. Okay. Last night had a, um, an author signing, if you will, um, for the young folks who included uh, literature as well as artwork. But the cover is done by the young man, awesome young man, who won the, na the National Magnet Student of the Year. Um, I don't think uh, that these kinds of things are put out, we don't see that enough. You know, we know what Ms. Mm -hmm. Adekoya has done because she's sitting on the board. I'm not sure that we would know as much about her if she were not sitting on the board. This, I mean, the stories and the works and the photography and the artwork in mm -hmm. the, this book 
is absolutely incredible. So please extend um, my gratitude. This is a magnet issue. So see, I'm trying to tie that in. This absolutely. is a magnet Thank issue. Thank you. Mm -hmm. And um, we are doing some wonderful things. So since you're here, thank you. Thank you. And we appreciate the recognition. Staff. As you know, more good things are happening than not. So absolutely. we appreciate all the positive recognition that our students and teachers deserve. So thank you. Thank you. Absolutely. Mm -hmm. Thank you so much. And is there any further business for the Policy Review Committee? Okay, thank you. If there's no further business, the meeting is adjourned, and we thank staff, Ms. Howie and Ms. Clark, and everyone for being here today. Oh, excuse me. I do have one more statement. Um, in accordance with the state law, the Education Transparency Act description from today's meeting will be posted on the school system's website on Monday. And I wanted to make sure that clarification was known. Now the meeting is adjourned. <laughs>